Would you please pray with me? Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that we can gather in freedom in your name because of the sacrifices of so many who've come before us, both in this country and with the gospel, to get us this blood-stained baton that we are now stewards of. We thank you for Dee's life. And as we honor and remember her, we pray for an extra special blessing of your spirit on Doug and on those who were mothered and grandmothered and who were sister and sister-in-law to this amazing reflection of your glory, Dee Cairns. It's in your name, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, it is my privilege to get up and say a few words, not only on behalf of the family, but on behalf of the church. I want to speak to you about a dearly loved child of God, someone who was an image bearer of Jesus Christ. And while we use the term dead for those who have crossed over to the next life, I assure you that Diane Duran Cairns is more alive today than she has ever been, and more alive than either you or me, because she no longer sees the face of her Savior, the kingdom's King of Kings, through a cloudy, impressionistic glass, broken by the fall. She now sees him face to face. This delightful image bearer of Jesus, known to my part of the family as Cousin D, the better half of Cousin Dougie, <laughs> was a wife to one of you present, a mother to two of you present, a grandmother, a great-grandmother, a sister, a sister-in-law, a friend, a fellow church member, a fellow resident. It's awe-inspiring to listen to the chorus of voices in perfect harmony and no cacophony singing these praises. The straw poll survey that I've taken is back and she was universally loved. Her smile, her character, her demeanor, her amiability, her humility, her hospitality, and according to her fighter pilot husband, Doug, she was the best imaginable wingman for life. And that, a life very well lived. She poured herself out like a fragrant offering, having been filled with the love of God for others and in everything she did, she was thoughtful and considerate putting the needs of others before her own. And given how well we all know and love Doug, I can say with integrity on behalf of the family that we are all grateful that a guy like Doug had a gal like Dee. As Doug and I were remembering her to each other at breakfast this morning, we both decided that in our marriages, our wives have not been the problem. Somehow, the Lord created these extraordinary gifts of his grace to complement the excesses of Cairns' descended men. We both decided that we were the problem. Dee herself was forged in fire, and like Doug's grandfather, her father was a Japanese POW, twice on Japanese transport ships that were bombed by Americans, one that was sunk at sea, one sunk in port, but he survived. He survived all that to return from war when she was very little. She would have been formed and informed by such experiences to know that she almost lost her father while he was fighting for a great cause, a man who made no provision for injustice even while striving for peace. This would have been her earliest memory of her father, a warrior returned from the worst imaginable experience in one of the world's worst wars, only to become a professional soldier for the rest of his life. 
So Dee, before she became a career Air Force spouse, married to a fighter pilot and a test pilot whose life would often be at risk, she was an army brat, the daughter of a colonel and wife of an Air Force colonel. Those are hard jobs in and of themselves, and Dee came through all that with that smile for which she has been known. She didn't become known to many of you until after Doug's retirement from a distinguished career in the Air Force. Dee was beautifully and wonderfully knit together in her mother's womb by her creator. And there was much of that beauty and strength of character that just seemed to come naturally to her. And yet, having been a cultural Christian, as many of us have been growing up as we have in the church, without the lights coming on, she and Doug recognized in the wake of the Vietnam War that something indeed was missing. Some reason for living, some reason for aspiring to greatness, not in the world's economy, but in light of eternity. And so in the early 70s, Doug and Dee sought out another couple whose lives they had seen change from being mere cultural Christians to having a vibrant purpose, a reason for living with an intent, with a side effect of love and joy they hadn't seen before in these two. They were warned about that other couple, stationed at the time at West Point while they were in Dayton, Ohio. They were warned not to become Jesus freaks like those two, my parents. And from my parents, the deposit of the seed of God's word that had been dormant awakened powerfully in Doug and Dee both. And from then on, life was lived entirely for the benefit of others, and the joy of the Lord beamed from Dee's eyes at all times, it seemed. When we talk about her smile that she so often flashed to all of us, we are talking about the sincere and automatic response of the heart of someone who knew how much and by whom she was beloved by her Father in heaven. And those of us who become awake to this reality know the Father through the perfect image of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, his only Son, and through the power of the Holy Spirit poured into our hearts until we burst with his love for others and we become ourselves more and more like him. Some of us, having believed that Jesus is the reason for the season and other cliches like that, make the mistake of knowing Jesus just well enough to believe in him as Lord to be saved, but we still live as carnal Christians, driven by the things our souls and our bodies have always tended toward, money and stuff, power and positional authority, celebrity, youth. But those are not the things that motivated D. Cairns. She had come to know the wonderful love of our beautiful Savior, and her face shone like the sun, radiantly in the reflected glory of God, and that by his design. And one wonderful side effect of allowing the Spirit of God to saturate us inwardly with his love from beyond the edge of the universe through faith in Christ is the assurance and confidence and hope that come through faith and by his mercy for no other reason than that it is his character and it is his delight to love us. Our hope is not rooted in achievements of ours in the past. That hope is not rooted in the contextual, dynamical ups and downs of experiences in our present. That hope comes from knowing the future, that even though we die, nevertheless, in our flesh, we will see God in the land of the living. The deposit of this gospel of the love of God in Jesus Christ is precisely that love that breathed her into existence in her mother's womb, then birthed her again spiritually at the moment she leaned her whole weight and trust upon Jesus. Our hope and trust is in the finished work of the cross to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, but it is also the purifying work of the Holy Spirit in fire to clear away all the dross, all within us that rebels against God, 
And at the last, we will receive resurrected bodies. None of this Miltonian talk about going to a disembodied cloud land, but a new creation, new heavens, new earth. We will be with God, who will have poured himself, although not exhaustively, into his temple palace, the cosmos. In the Greek, it says, for God so loved, not terra firma, but the cosmos that he gave his only son. The whole thing he wants to renew, and he will renew. He will be within us, about us, above us, behind us, before us, beneath us, and there will neither be tears, for he will have wiped them all away, and there will not be sin disrupting our relationship between ourselves and God, ourselves and others, and between ourselves and our true identity as the beloved of God. We will all have the opportunity for that new and vibrant, abundant life in Christ with the Holy Spirit baptizing us within and without not just with cleansing water, but with purifying fire. This is the faith once delivered through the apostles to the saints, delivered down the generations of the saints to my parents, delivered through my parents to Doug and Dee, making us forever spiritual brothers and sisters by the blood of the Lamb. Make no mistake, Jesus was Dee's whole life. It is why she loved Doug so well. Why she went on all their adventures together without complaint. Why she followed his lead so well. Why she invested herself in hundreds upon hundreds of Girl Scouts and elementary school kids and sixth graders as their scout leader or their teacher. She knew love was what life was all about. And she made herself all about love. It is heart-wrenching to have to say goodbye, especially to those who have stewarded their primary responsibility of loving others as Jesus has loved them and have done it so well. We love her so because she loved us so. Busying herself with meeting our needs as though they had become her primary need in life, for it had become precisely that. Toward the end, in her confusion and memory loss, she never lost that muscle memory of the joy of the Lord, her smile, her delight in connecting with others through her eyes, her unwavering trust in Doug, who has always had her best in mind. She was one of the strongest, most beautiful, most delightful people I have ever known. And our family will miss her devoted hospitality. However, know that we too, those of us who are in Christ, will see her again in the land of the eternally alive, having looked into the cosmic judge's eyes to see the loving kindness and relentless tenderness of our Savior there. My hope for you is that you too will seek to find the incomprehensible love of God in Jesus Christ that Dee had embodied in herself, becoming herself, just like Jesus. A living face and a name for God's incarnate love in our lives. The legacy of his love and hers goes on and on and on and on forever like a relentless tide that knocks at the door of our hearts until we open just a crack and he floods in with his light and his love. Brothers and sisters, do not seek the living among the dead. He is risen. He is alive. And so is she. Are we? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.